Hey, Katie. My food isn't ready yet. I came home early today. Why are you not home? I'm sorry, Matt. I'm hospitalized. What? Why would you be hospitalized? Pregnancy isn't a disease. Morning sickness is already over. I knew it. You're faking it, aren't you? Just because you can't be bothered to do the housework, I won't allow you to be in the hospital with a fake illness. Just come home and make me dinner. I can't do that. I feel so bad that I can't even get up. Huh? Yours is just a lazy disease. You can't even take care of your responsibilities. Get out of the hospital and do what you have to do. You're so useless. Don't you dare talk back to me. I'm sorry. I can't. Damn it! If you weren't pregnant, I'd kick you right out of here. Man, I'm so frustrated. I want a divorce. Don't say divorce so easily. You can't even take care of your husband. You deserve a divorce, don't you? But I'm not feeling well right now. I don't need excuses like that. I'm getting irritated just talking to you, Matt. I made a mistake marrying you. I work hard every day, but you skip housework just because you feel sick. Can't you share the hard work with me? I'm sorry. I'll do my best with the housework when I get better. I can't trust you. What do you mean? You're going to have a baby. You're gonna say you have a hard time taking care of the baby and skip housework, aren't you? I was a fool to marry the sloppy woman like you. What should I do then? I want to work hard, but my body won't listen to me. Why don't you go back home? I can't now. It's a waste of money to pay for a hospital stay. But even if you could come home. If you just sleep and don't do any chores, you'd just be in the way. Go home and let your parents take care of you. Oh no. Oh, wait. My bad. I just remembered. You're raised by a single mother. My parents' house is far away, and my mom is busy with work. I can't rely on my mom that easily. I'm sorry. Gosh. Why, when you're done having a baby, move out of my house. You mean, you want a divorce? That's what I'm saying. You're kidding, right? Nope. You've changed, Matthew. Huh? We were so nice to me when we first got married. Why do you keep saying terrible things to me lately? It's because you're faking illness just to slack off. I'm not faking it. Oh, I've been called in for a checkup. A checkup? Yeah. What's the matter with you? Are you really sick? That's what I've been saying all along. I thought it's normal to be tired when you're pregnant. I lost my appetite, so I went to the hospital. And my doctor said there was something serious. I'll call you when I get the results of the tests. Why don't you just refuse the test? Huh? It's a waste of money. That's not how it works. If it's the disease that affects the baby, I'd have to treat it immediately. It's a probably just a cold or something. You gold digger, lazy woman. Gosh, even I got summoned to see the doctor. What kind of mother finds out she has cancer while pregnant? You're so useless. Can't even take care of yourself. I'm sorry. The doctor asked me to choose between you or my daughter. I immediately said, "Daughter, please." What? Why are you so confused? I don't care about your body. Just have my baby. Wait a minute. I can't believe my doctor said that. 
He said we'd work together so I could see my daughter's face. Was it lying? There's nothing we can do. Your doctor couldn't even tell you. Even before I've even started the treatment, how can they be so sure that they can only save me or the baby? I'm telling you, you can't ask the doctor. They'll just tell you whatever they think don't hurt you. Oh, by the way, my mom was at the hospital too, right? I'll confirm with my mom too. You both heard what your doctor said, didn't you? Your mother had to work, so she left first. You're doubting me? But it's the truth. Your mom said she wanted to put her grandchildren before you. But it's too much to ask her to tell her own daughter the ugly truth. So I'm the bad guy instead of your mom. Do you understand? I'm doing it for you. And I'm so angry that you suspect me. I see. Well, you can ask your mom. I doubt she'll tell you the truth out of concern for you. Well, my mom is a kind person. Hey, Matthew. I can raise her, right? I'm in a bit of shock. I'm a little confused. You can't raise her, can you? It's already too hard to give birth. Oh yeah, where did you put your insurance documents? I can't remember right now. Why? I'm gonna need it after you leave, right? You're going to leave after you have the baby anyway. Am I that much worse off? Your doctor said you'll only have a few more months if you don't get treatment. A few months? They said you won't last long even if you get treatment. Anyway, because I don't want anything to happen to my baby, so no treatment. It will be a real problem if the baby is not born in a perfect health because of the medication. And if you tell me that you can't give birth anymore, I'll hate you for the rest of my life. You can't be so heartless as to only let yourself survive, right? Of course. I'll have this baby even if it cost me my life. Please do so. Don't get medical treatment. You're going to keep the baby. Refuse treatment at all costs. Is that clear? Okay. Fine. Okay. That's what makes you a mother. If you're ready for this, then I'm relieved. I'm the only one who can protect our baby. Anyway, for now, I'm just gonna try my best to have a healthy baby. Oh, but just so you know, if there's anything wrong with the baby, I won't raise her. What? Of course I won't. I can't work and raise a kid who's a handful. I'm going to put her up for adoption or put her in a facility. Please don't do that. She's her daughter no matter what. The ultrasound showed no abnormalities in the child. I'm sure she'll be fine. You don't know that until she's born. She's your child. You'll take good care of her, right? Well, if she's a good-looking kid like me, I'll raise her. If it's ugly like you, I'll give her to someone else. You're so cruel. Or I can keep her at home. And make her work like a housekeeper or something. Don't do that. No matter how much you hate me, don't harass an innocent child. Then you'll have to endure and survive, and raise her by yourself. But well, you'll never be able to do that. I'll do whatever it takes to survive. I'm the only one who can protect her. Good imagination there. You can barely get up now. I wonder how you're going to be from now on. As I recall, your disease is going to be very painful and agonizing from now on. Is this so? My condolences. I think it'll be easier if you leave soon. 
What a thing to say to someone who's trying to so hard to live. You want to be free from suffering as soon as possible, don't you? Besides, the longer you stay in the hospital, the more money it costs. I think you should just go gracefully for the sake of our family. You're terrible. I can't leave her here with you. No matter what to do, you're running out of time. You've only got a short time left. Katie, I got a call from the hospital. You suddenly got sick. Bad timing. I was in the middle of a meeting. Is it finally happening? Is that it? Anyway, come to the hospital as soon as possible. So, this is the end for you, huh? Dang it. I don't have your life insurance documents ready. I'll have to go home and look for it. Can't wait to see how much it's worth. What? I'm gonna say this one last time. I don't care about your body. Just make sure you have my baby. If you're going to so, be responsible as my wife. Save my daughter. What a thing to say. Katie's in heaven. What? What nonsense are you talking? Are you trying to make fun of me? Katie passed away just a few minutes ago. Huh? I'm Katie's mother. <laughs> Emily? I'm so shocked that you said such a terrible thing to Katie. Wait, wait a minute. Why are you using Katie's WhatsApp? Just when I was looking at Katie's phone, I got a notice from you. I opened it and found a lot of abusive texts about Katie. It was so horrifying that my hands were shaking. Uh... Um, that's a misunderstanding. I have the entire history of the WhatsApp you sent, Katie. When you came to me to greet me for the marriage, you said you'd take good care of Katie for the rest of her life. You'd be burying her in your horrible words. You make me sick. You also said unbelievable things about my granddaughter, such as putting her in a facility and using her as a housekeeper. Well, Emily, please listen to me for a minute. I don't want to hear your excuses. As a mother, I'm so ashamed of myself. I didn't understand what Katie wanted to say to me, but couldn't. It's not that, Emily. I wanted Katie to become a strong mother. I was just being hard on her, for her own good. I don't think so. You're such a jerk. I can't believe you said all these cruel things. Katie must have been so sad and depressed. Even when it was a hard time for her with the pregnancy and cancer treatment, you were even verbally abusive to her. But Emily, Katie is at fault too. She got sick because she wasn't taking good care of herself. I may just have said too much, but... You just said too much? How can you be so unconcerned after hurting Katie like this? You're not a human. You're a demon or a devil. You don't have to go that far. Don't be ridiculous. You can't believe you said I chose my granddaughter over Katie. You even lied. That's not a lie. What? I was just trying to see if Katie could fulfill her responsibilities as a mother. There's no use in deceiving me. I've always found it weird. I used to tell Katie. She could have a child only when she were healthy and that her body was the most important thing, so let's get treatment as soon as possible. But she refused. It's so sad to think that it was because of you, Matthew. But Katie was the one who finally decided not to have the treatment, Wednesday. I was only giving her some advice. You're the one who made Katie say that. Don't blame me alone. 
Oh, of course. I'm also guilty for not noticing. But you, you even pushed her into a corner. When she was already suffering. Hey, it's not like all I did was wrong. What about a kid? Does she come out okay? The child was born safe. I see. It's a cute little girl, just like Katie. What? She looks like Katie? Is there a problem? Well, I'm not confident in raising a child that looks just like Katie. What the heck? See? Every time I see her face, I'd be reminding of Katie. It's hard for me, isn't it? Are you saying that you wish you never had her? I'm still young. There's a good chance I'll remarry. If I have a child who looks like Katie, it would be a hindrance. What the heck? I wish I never had a daughter with Katie. You're unbelievable. I can't trust you with Katie's daughter. I'll take her in and raise her myself. Thanks. I want to start a new life with little baggage. Katie will be sad to hear that. Katie protected her baby until the very end. She even refused painkillers. She just did what a mother should do, didn't she? You made her do it, didn't you? How much Katie suffered! But isn't Katie happy that she was able to protect her child? I'm not going to the hospital. I'll leave the rest to you. That's enough. Katie was holding out hope that she might be cured. It was you who put the deadline on her life, wasn't it? If it wasn't for that, Katie might have been cured. Because I thought it'd be better to inform her. So that she can be mentally prepared before she left. It's important, you know. Bull! And you even said my condolences about someone who was still alive? No matter how hard it was, she endured it without a single one. I despise you for saying such dirty words to Katie. There's no need to be so angry. Matthew, come to the hospital right now and apologize. Huh? Get down on your knees and apologize to Katie for all the mistakes you've made. How can do? Katie can't hear anything I say anymore. You said she's passed away, so you want me to apologize to a ghost? Don't you realize what you did wrong? Well, I feel a little bad. But I didn't let you cure her. But I don't think she was going to be able to get cured completely anyway. I think I did her a favor in the end. She didn't have to suffer for a long time. Matthew, there's something you're hiding. What do you mean? You're cheating on her. Dang. You admit it, don't you? How did you know? Katie told me about it. Katie? When you first got married, you were kind to her. But the moment Katie got pregnant, you turned cold. When Katie was suffering from morning sickness, you didn't even care. And sometimes went out of line. Um... That's why I investigated on Katie's behalf. What? I asked the detective agency to investigate you. You, you went that far? The results were just as I expected. Around the same time Katie got pregnant, you started going out with a female colleague. When I saw the report result, I want to throw up. Katie was suffering from an illness. You were out there having an affair. But... But... I had it bad too. You had it bad? Because Katie got sick. I had to do the housework myself even though I was busy with work. Besides, a sickly woman like Katie isn't fit to be my wife. Matthew, please be honest with me. 
You wanted to remarry that Trump, so that's why you made Katie refuse treatment, right? Even if that was true, I wouldn't voluntarily admit it. I'm so disappointed in you. Well, say what you want. I'm going to start a new family with my girlfriend. Oh, you can't marry her though? Huh? What are you talking about? She wants to be with me. Don't you know that she has a fiancé? What the heck? I found out when I hired a detective to investigate. Your cheating partner has a fiancé. She misses him a lot because of their long-distance relationship. She must have cheated on him with you because you were so close. But that's not what I heard. That's too bad. To her, you were just a game. For real? I thought if Katie passed away, I could remarry her. With Katie's insurance money, I thought I was going to have an elegant honeymoon with her. Insurance money? What are you talking about? Katie's life insurance. You are the beneficiary. What? I'm the beneficiary. Huh? Why? Katie found out about your affair. She took the necessary procedures to change the beneficiary. But Katie couldn't have done it. She did it herself. Katie was discharged from the hospital several times, right? She took the life insurance documents with her. Damn it! Snaking around when I'm not looking. Katie may look timid, but she is really a strong and smart girl. Well then, Emily, can you give me half of Katie's life insurance? I'm her husband, so of course I'm entitled to it, right? I won't give you a single penny. I'll use the insurance money to pay for my granddaughter's education. I'll be in trouble if I don't get the insurance money. What? Are you in financial trouble? I gave my girlfriend a lot of gifts. I took her on vacations. I have nothing in savings. Like I care. You had it coming. You cheated on her. Emily, please give me some money. You're pathetic. You know what? You have no right to start a new life. You spend the rest of your life making amends to Katie. You understand? Oh no! After that, Matthew had a tragic end. His boss found out that he had an affair with a colleague at work. He found it difficult to stay in the company and resigned from his job. When he became unemployed, the fiancé of his cheating partner asked him for alimony. Matthew, who had no savings, had to take on a large amount of debt. Matthew could not find a job even if he wanted to change his job. He could no longer afford to pay the rent for his apartment, so he moved into his parents' house. Soon after, his parents kicked him out. I had told his parents everything about what Matthew had done. I am sure that Matthew must be deeply regretting his actions by now. Katie gave birth safely. After seeing the baby's face, she departed to the other world. She suffered until she lost consciousness. Protect her! Save her! She kept repeating after she lost consciousness. So I will protect the precious life Katie left behind for me. Thankfully, Katie's sister, my eldest daughter, and her husband offered their support. With the help of my family, I will raise Katie's daughter well. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.